Hey everybody, I hope you're doing well today and welcome back to Scale Skills. This video is Lesson 9 and we're going to cover page 10 today, One Octave Major Scales. Alright, so we're on page 10 and like I said, we're going to cover One Octave Major Scales. Now, One Octave Major Scales uh, encompasses both page 10 and 11. But I'm going to split uh, pages 10 and 11 into two separate lessons. So lesson 9 today, we're just going to focus on these four scales on page 10. C major, G major, D major, and A major. Now you've already gone through these exercises earlier in the book. So what we're doing here on page 10 is we're taking uh, these one octave scales and playing them uh, up the octave and back down the octave, hands together at the same time. So it's really not too difficult, but I'm going to encourage you to still go ahead and do uh, hands individually first. So at the top, C major, we're gonna start with our right hand. So we are going to start basically in our C position right here. So that puts our thumb on C. Now with the C position, uh, normally you outline all five fingers on these five notes, C, D, E, F, and G. Now you're gonna go ahead and do that, but you're not gonna be playing those first five notes with these fingers. Um, and that is just so that we can actually get up to the top portion, the A, B, and C of this scale. So as a review, a one octave scale, in this case in the key of C major, is starting on C and going up one octave to this C, playing all the white keys in between. But to make that happen successfully and smoothly, we're gonna need certain fingering. So if you notice on the book, they have labeled every note with a finger number. So we're starting with our thumb on C, and then we're gonna to go to two on D, followed by three on E. Now here is the first uh, important fingering. Uh, that is your thumb will come under the third finger to F. And then once that happens, then you're going to rotate the rest of the hand around and put two on G, three on A, four on B, and you end with five on C. So really going up that first octave, that is the most important fingering right there on the F. So the pattern is one, two, three, and then cross under one, two, three, four, five. Now we're going to use the same fingering going down the octave, but it's going to feel a little bit different because you're going to cross at a different moment with different fingering. So you're going to come back down with four on B, three on A, two on G, thumb on the F, but when you come down, you're crossing over this way and you're going to put three on E and then you'll end up with two on D and thumb on C. So it's crucial that you cross over to the three on E. If you do two, you've run out of fingers. If you do four, you're left with a extra finger. Finger. So one more time, from the very beginning, we got thumb on C, two on D, three on E, bring the thumb under to F, two on G, three on A, four on B, and five on C. Coming down, four on B, three on A, 2G, 1 on F, bring the third finger over to E, 2 on D, and finally we have our thumb on middle C. Now the left hand is sort of uh, opposite in a way, because you're going to start with 5 on this C, and instead of like in the right hand we went 1, 2, 3, you're going 5, 4, 3. But what's different about the left hand is you're actually going to run these first five notes with all five fingers. And then you're going to cross over. So the crossing over doesn't occur at the same time. And there lies the challenge when you put the hands together in just a moment. So the left hand is five on C, four on D, three on E, two on F, thumb on G, and then you're going to bring that third finger over to A, and then two on B, and end it with thumb on C. Coming back down to two on B, three on A, and then here you're gonna bring your thumb under to G, and then bring the rest of the hand over to two on F, three on E, four on D, 
and finally five on C. Let's do that one more time. So five on C, four on D, three on E, two on F, thumb on the G, bring your third finger over to A, two on B, and thumb on C. Going back down, two on B, three on A, the thumb comes under to G, two on F, three on E, four on D, and five on C. So you'll notice that I'm making this a smooth motion. I'm not jumping off the keyboard when I do the crossover. I'm keeping it tight and smooth. And when I say tight, I mean it's just a small movement. I don't mean tightening up, but it's a small movement. I'm holding my thumb on the G, and while I'm holding it, I'm twisting, twisting my hand over. That way I can smoothly go from G to A without a break. Because um, essentially when you play these scales, you want it to be even and smooth. You don't want it to be choppy and broken up. So even and smooth is what we're after. And it's not just this fingering, but uh, how you conduct your crossovers and crossing unders, that will enhance the smoothness. So now the challenge is putting the hands together. So there's several ways you could do this, but probably the easiest way is going slowly one note at a time and perhaps even saying out loud the fingering. So starting with your left hand and then your right hand, um, so you could say, okay, I've got five and one on C's, four and two on D's. So basically you're checking your fingering before you play the note, three and three on E's. Now, this is almost like a little checkpoint because this is one of those rare moments where both hands are playing the same finger on the same note. So it's almost like a little checkpoint in that sense. But now comes the hard part. You've got one, well, you've got two in the left hand on F, but you've got one in the right hand. So you're not going to the next finger in both hands. You are going to the next finger in the left hand, but you've got to bring your thumb under in the right hand. So two on F in the left hand, thumb under in the right hand, and then play them together. Now remember when you're done with that, you're gonna bring your right hand over, and now you've got one and two on the Gs. Now here's another checkpoint, and this one's kinda, kinda nifty because it's three on A in both hands, but look where my third finger is right now in my left hand. I've gotta cross it over. So I do have the crossover, but I'm landing with my third finger in both hands on A's. So that's a neat checkpoint because it helps remember bring that third finger over in the left hand. Going on, we've got two and four on B's, and we're gonna end with thumb and fifth finger on C's. Now you might just wanna practice that several times before coming down, because that in itself is a little challenging. And obviously what you're practicing the most are the crossing unders right here on the F, making sure second finger in the left hand, but the right hand crosses to thumb. And then the G's, so one and two. And then of course here on the A's, cause the left hand crosses over to three. So it's threes on the A's and then four and, I mean two and four on the B's and thumb and fifth finger. Now you're coming down with the same fingering, but again, it won't feel like it because you have to conduct the crossovers differently. So when you come down, it's just two and four. We've already got our threes on the A's, but this is the important one. This is the one that's a little tricky. You got to remember this is where the thumb comes under to G in the left hand, but your right hand is just the second finger. So that's a big one. And then you're gonna continue with two on F and thumb on F. Here's the other big one, but this is also a checkpoint. Your right hand now brings the third finger to E. Your left hand third finger is already on E. And then you just finish it up, four and two and five and one. And you're also gonna to wanna to practice coming down by itself. So when you come down and you make a mistake, don't go back to the beginning, just start at the top of the octave and work your way down. That way you have more focus on coming down because if you start at the bottom all the time, you're putting all your focus there. So start at the top. 
And it's also good practice maybe to do this in reverse, starting at the top, going down, and then coming up. So like this. So that's not written, but this exercise isn't necessarily about what's written as it is about mastering the scale. And so if you really want to master that one octave scale, coming down and then up is a great way to practice it just to mix things up. So one more time coming down from the top, you've got your thumb and your fifth finger on C's four, uh, two and four on B's, both threes on A's, and then the thumb comes under in the left hand to G, second finger in the right hand on G, Bring that second finger over to F in the left hand, thumb on F in the right hand. Then you bring the three over in the right hand to E. Both threes are on E's. Finish it up with four and two and five and one. So like I said, your goal right now is not speed, but it's accuracy and evenness. So something like this. This speed and this evenness and smoothness would be really ideal. So you want to get to the point where if someone were listening, they would have no idea where your crossovers and cross-unders are. Um, if, you're, if you're having a hard time with them and you're pausing, now pausing is fine when you're practicing, but ultimately you don't want your listener to say, well, there's the cross under because I hear the break and the pause. You eventually want to work past that. So again, speed is not the issue. It's the smoothness and the evenness. That is the goal. Now, speed, of course, is fun and you do want to get speed, but that's certainly the last thing to do. You've got to master the basics first. So here's the cool thing about going on the G major. G major now um, is starting on Gs. And G major, as you know, has one sharp, the F sharp. So when you get to the Fs, you're going to automatically go to the sharp. But here's the cool thing about it in comparison to C major. It's the same fingering. It's not going to feel the same because you're starting on Gs and you have F sharp. But the pattern is the same. Let's check it out. In the right hand, I'm starting with my thumb on G. And so that pattern was one, two, three. So one on G two on A, three on B. And then the pattern went one, two, three, four, five. So I'm crossing my thumb under on C, and I'm gonna finish it up with two on D, three on E, four on F sharp, and then five. I anticipate that F sharp. So you wanna to get to the point of when you're playing, look what happens to my fourth finger. When I'm on the D, my fourth finger is already going up for that F sharp, anticipating. And of course, you do this enough, it's going to do it automatically. But think about that. You don't want to be here, and then all of a sudden, you got to jump up. It's not going to be smooth. It's not going to be even. So anticipate the F sharp. Play a little bit higher into the keys. So when I talk about it's the same pattern, look at the pattern. And you can look on the page, or you can watch here. When I go to C major, it was one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. Look at G major, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. Pretty cool, same exact fingering. And that's gonna be the case for D major and A major. So you're already, you've already got the fingering down, it's just learning it on this slightly different feel, this different layout. So we ended with 5 on G, now we're coming back down. So remember when you come back down, you're going right back to that F sharp with the fourth finger. 3 on E, 2 on D, all the way to thumb on C, and then you're going to cross over. Remember, you're crossing over to 3 on B, and then 2 on A, and thumb on D. So let's do that one more time from the beginning. Thumb on G, 2 on A, 3 on B. Thumb under on C, two on D, three on E, four on F sharp, five on G, four on F sharp, three on E, two on D, thumb on C, cross over to three on B, two on A, and then finally your thumb on G. The fingering is the same in the left hand as well. I've got five on G, and I'm gonna go all the way up to my thumb. So that's five, four on A, three on B, two on C, thumb on D, cross over to three, 
Very important. It's three, not four or two, but three on E. Remember your F sharp with two. And then thumb on G. Come back down, two on F sharp, three on E. And here's the big one. The thumb comes under to D. And then you finish it up. Two on C, three on B, four on A, five on G. So let's do that left hand one more time. Five on G, four on A, three on B, two on C, thumb on D, cross over to three on E, two on F sharp, thumb on G. Back to two on F sharp, three on E, thumb under on D, two on C, three on B, four on A, five on G. So yes, when we put the hands together, it's the same pattern as C major was hands together. You even have the same checkpoints, the same fingers, the third finger in both cases are gonna be on the same notes. So we're starting with five and one on G, four and two on A, here's our first checkpoint, threes on Bs. Right after that, that's where the right hand is gonna come under, thumb on C, and the left hand is two on C. And then you're gonna continue, thumb on D, two on D, Here's our next big checkpoint, and it's a crossover in the left hand, three on E. You also have three on E in the right hand. And then we're gonna finish it up with our last two fingers, two and four. And remember, that's the F sharp, so be ready for it. And then five and one. Coming back down, two and four. Threes on the E's. And then here's a big one. The, the left hand comes under to thumb on the D. Your second finger in the right hand on D. Continue to two on C and thumb on C. And then our other checkpoint, threes on B. That means your third finger in the right hand crosses over. And then finish it up, four and two, and five and one. Okay, so again, same thing as C major. It's just gonna feel different. You got the F sharp, same pattern, same crossovers, same fingers that have those checkpoints. Um, D major, let's go on D major, same concept, same pattern, same fingering. Now you've got two black keys, you've got F sharp and C sharp. So as a review, that scale is D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, and D. So you have to anticipate those sharps a little bit higher into the keys. So when I start the beginning, Remember, my first crossover isn't until after the third finger. Well, the third finger plays F sharp. So don't start the scale like this. Start the scale up here like this. You've already outlined that F sharp that gives you um, an advantage. So it's thumb on D, two on E, three on the F sharp. Bring that thumb under to G. Two on A, three on B. And look, my fourth finger is already highlighting C sharp and then five on D. So we're gonna come back down four on C sharp, three on B, two on A, thumb on G, cross over. Now, this is the first time we've had a crossover onto a black key, so it's gonna feel a little different. So again, anticipate it's up there, it's not down here, it's up there. Three on F sharp, two on E, and thumb on D. Now the left hand, same thing. Five on D, four on E, three on F sharp. I'm already anticipating that. Two on G, thumb on A. Here's the big crossover, three to B. Be ready for that C sharp right after that B. It's up here. So don't be down here, but be up here. Thumb on D. Come down, back to the C sharp, back to the B. The big cross under is thumb on A, two on G, Anticipating that F sharp ahead of time with the third finger, four on E, five on D. So when we put the hands together, our first checkpoint is threes on F sharp. So again, first time we had that uh, with a sharp key. So we got five and one on the Ds, four and two on the Es, our first checkpoint. Threes on F sharps, which means our right hand crosses under. Thumb on G, your left hand is two on G. Thumb on A, two on A. Our next big crossover is also our next big checkpoint. 
Three comes over onto B in the left hand. You've got three on B in the right hand. But then be ready for those C sharps, two and four, and then one and five. Coming back down, C sharps, two and four, threes on the Bs, and that indicates our left hand comes under with the thumb, two on A in the right hand, two and one on Gs. Here's our next checkpoint, and the crossover in the right hand, threes on F sharps. And then finish it out with four and two, and five and one. And let's go ahead and finish it up with A major, three sharps. We have F sharp, C sharp, and G sharp. So in our right hand, we're gonna start on the A below middle C with our thumb. Still the same pattern, so that's two on B. Here's our first sharp, C sharp with the third finger. And then our first crossover, thumb under to D. Bring your hand over, two on E. Here's our next sharp, three on F sharp, and another sharp, four on G sharp. Back to back sharps right there, and then five on A. So that's a little bit of play with some of our weaker fingers. So you might want to extra practice on pounding these notes out. Coming down, so your five on A, go down to four on G sharp, three on F sharp, two on E, thumb on D, and then our crossover is three to C sharp, two on B, and thumb on A. The left hand, five on A, four on uh, B, three on C sharp, two on D, thumb on E, Cross over, and remember it's the third finger, F sharp, two on G sharp, thumb on A. Going down, we got two on G sharp, three on F sharp, three, uh, excuse me, thumb under on E, and then finish it up, two on D, three on C sharp, four on B, and five on A. So hands together, five and one on A, four and two on B, our checkpoint, threes on C sharps. And then the right hand comes under with the thumb. So it's two and one on Ds, one and two on Es. Our next big checkpoint brings the third finger over to F sharp. So it's threes on F sharps. Two and four on G sharps. Take your time here. Really feel this, it's a little tricky and then one and five on the A's. Going back down, two and four on G sharp, threes on F sharps, the left hand comes under, thumb on E, two on E in the right hand, two and one. Bring that third finger over in the right hand, we have our other checkpoint, threes on, on C sharps, four and two on B's, and five and one on A's. So for you guys who are good with numbers, this entire page is a pattern. The right hand is one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. When you're ascending, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. That was the case for all these scales. The G scale, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. And the D scale, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. And the same for the A scale. Now, if you want to break it up like I did, uh, when you're practicing, that's a fine idea, actually. That can help you learn it faster. But again, in the end, it's one smooth, continuous motion. Um, when you're coming down in the right hand, so starting at five, um, let me just go here to C. It's five, four, three, two, one, three, two, one. So if you look at that entire pattern in the right hand, it's one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. And then four, three, two, one, Three, two, one. So it's this, one, two, three, this, one, two, three, four, and then this, five. Because look what happens if I play it that same way going down. Same fingers. When you look at it that way, it's just like, huh, I'm doing the same grouping of notes with the same fingers. And that's the case for all four of these on this page. What makes it so bizarre is, well, if you're looking at hands individually, you're crossing differently. So you gotta go thumb under when you come up, but when you come down, you gotta go over your thumb. So that's what starts to make it a little more challenging. 
Now your left hand has the pattern too, but it's the opposite pattern. Look at that, five, and then four fingers, four, three, two, one, right? And then three, two, one. Huh, that's the opposite of the right hand. Because we started with one, two, three, one, two, three, four, and then five. But the left hand was five, four, three, two, one, three, two, one. There lies the challenge of putting the hands together because I'm doing the reverse of those patterns at the same time. <laughs> so that's why you have crossing under in one hand and then crossing over later in the other hand because your patterns are mixed and it's done that way because that's how our hands are made. Our fingers are opposite. If your right hand and left hand were the same, if my thumb was over here in the left hand, then it'd be easy. It'd be the same fingers crossing at the same times, but it's not that way. Um, those checkpoints, though, can be helpful because those are the few times when both hands line up perfectly. So going back to C major, the E's with threes, the A's with threes. So I like to look at those as little checkpoints because if you're not on threes on E's or threes on A's, something went wrong. Now, it won't help you determine where you're going, but that's what I mean by a checkpoint. You can check yourself at that point and say, huh, am I on that right fingering? Three's on E's. Oh, wait, I'm not. That means something went wrong. I need to start again, look a little closer and see what I did wrong. And nine out of 10 times, you probably crossed over or under at the wrong time or with the wrong finger. That's what makes scale so hard. It's the fingering. And the fact that, again, you're doing hands... Uh, crossing over and under at different times. So it's a wonderful brain exercise for one. Scales, of course, are the foundation to almost all, if not all, music. Everything's built off scales, in including chords and melodies. Um, but it's a wonderful exercise uh, just to get the fingers moving and, like I said, the brain working. But it gets you a feel for those keys. So when you play a song that's in the key of C major, you can warm up with your C major scale, you're getting a feel for that key, no sharps, no flats. For G major, you're getting a feel now for that F sharp, for D major, the two sharps, and the three sharps in A major. Now that doesn't mean you won't have other flats and sharps, but the majority of the uh, music, especially when you're a beginner, um, the notes in the song, if it's in the key, will come straight from that scale and be mostly those notes. So there's a lot of good stuff here at play. So that is lesson nine. Um, lesson 10 will continue on page 11, and that gets into a little more difficult scales, E major, B major, F major, B flat major. Uh, the fingering is different on those scales. So this finger pattern isn't true of all scales. Uh, we sort of got lucky today. It is the same for C, G, D, and A. Uh, it is true of E major, but B major, it starts to change. And for flat scales, they almost all have different fingering. Um, there are some minor scales in the future, such as A minor, that's an easy one. A to A, all white keys, just like C major, has the exact same fingering. So um, unfortunately, it's not universal, but there are a great deal of scales that use that fingering. So that's nice. So as with anything else, take your time. Like I said, go slow. Speed's not a concern. Evenness, smoothness is, but even more so, of course, getting the notes, but the fingering and the crossing overs and unders and the timing relationship between both hands is crucial to this exercise. So I wish you all the best. Thanks for sticking around, and I look forward to seeing you in Lesson 10.